on this computer. Guys, what is the crack? Zooming from Derry, I've got Chris McLaughlin. Welcome, Chris. Hey, Danny, thanks for having us on. Yeah, man, thanks for agreeing to come on. Um, you've been early to Bitcoin, so I think you've got some good experience and uh, you're going to be able to share some of your experience and knowledge with us. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting into that. But before that, maybe give us a little bit about your backstory about leading into to Bitcoin. Like, you know, what's your background? Uh, yeah, but but it has been uh, Bitcoin, but I, I wouldn't say that I'm a veteran anyway. I'm a wish I'd have been a few years earlier. Um, but yeah, general, my background's in business um, with a preference for uh, economics. Most of my employment's been in uh, technology the last 15 years. So kind of naturally um, was going to, I would say, move towards um, Bitcoin eventually. Um, had an interest in investing since uh, 2017. Um, probably observed it for the first while, um, kind of following stocks and um, trying to understand how everything worked um, before I dipped my toe in it. That is kind of uh, a bit daunting um, with your first investments, obviously hand over money to uh, watch other people make decisions uh, for it to go up and down. Um, yeah, so it's kind of more passive um, in the beginning. I, I did a lot of reading, um, uh, whether I agreed with all these uh, all-time great investors or not was, was different, but I wanted to learn uh, from them. So like so Warren Buffett, um, Benjamin Graham, a um, couple of good books from Benjamin Graham, uh, Peter Lynch, in order to get the fundamentals of investing, um, how you know human behavior was, was a big thing um, in that. Started small, started in, um, in index funds, um, picked a few stocks, wasn't great at it, to be honest. Um, Moved into real estate a few years later. Um, so yeah, over a period of time, just got more and more involved um, in investing, understand why the price moves up and down, uh, why, uh, how to value uh, companies, um, how to value investments. Um, then got more into the macroeconomics um, side of things and geopolitics and how everything intertwines. So kind of tried to take a long view on everything. Um, look at what the mistakes are for the average investor um, same where, where the average investor went wrong. My original goal was to beat the average investor, see if I could. Um, I don't know, it was all geared towards uh, passive investing. Um, I think I had a benefit of having um, a few close friends that are um, into finance and economics as well. Um, had a long, long conversation with those, uh, those people over many years. Used to walk in lunchtime with a very close friend, and all we talked about was finance and investing um, every every single day. So, yeah, my my journey into Bitcoin would have started from having an interest in investing um, and finance from from years before. Um, I did hear about Bitcoin in about twenty twelve or so. Um, pretty much ignored it and you know wrote it off. Uh, never looked too much into it. Um, I. The close friend who I, I used to walk around at lunchtime talking about investing one day came into me and said, um, Chris, Bitcoin, Bitcoin's where we need to be at. Um, and that was at a stage in 2013 where, you know, Bitcoin was going up thousands of percent, you know, I don't know, four or five thousand percent in that year. And my initial instinct based on all the education and all the research that I did was you don't go near something like that. Like that's a... Yeah. That's a scam. It, it, it's it's not to be trusted. And a year later, uh, you know, it, it had a crash, and I felt justified at that time that I made the right decision. And um, yeah, maybe I wish I hadn't thought like that at the time. But yeah, you, this is how you learn. Um, so yeah, I, I dismissed it. Um, felt justified. Um, and it um, afterwards kept investing in the traditional investment world. Uh, 2016 then started to diversify, started looking on a bit more into Bitcoin, um, started doing a bit more research on it. Not really any conviction, but a small amount um, of my portfolio into Bitcoin um, and watched it grow crazily um, throughout 2017 then, especially towards the, the end of 2017. And it is the price that draws you in, first of all. And I think a lot of people have to take that journey of um, like your, your natural instinct should be that you, 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 you shouldn't trust Bitcoin. Um, and anybody that does get it um, straight away, you know, they're, they're probably not being honest unless you've had a history, uh, a background in, in uh, finance, economics, and gold as your kind of 
um, base case uh, for why you invest. And um, you can see how it relates to um, gold investors uh, quite a lot. So yeah, um, took me a few years to to um, build up the conviction. Um, twenty seventeen, I watched the drop off the cliff again, um, and then, but uh, given given what it's done a couple of times, it, it, it intrigues you a bit more. I think the, the second cycle is when people will um, start taking more of an interest. You know, you, you've been through the first one, you see it, you think that's what it does. You, you go through the second one, and you think, yeah, there's there's something to this. So. Um, did quite a lot of research on Bitcoin, started investing in it more in 2017, uh, 2018, 2019. Uh, coming up to 2020, we all know what happened. Uh, with COVID crash, the money printers came out. Um, you could see how um, it was kind of an advertisement for Bitcoin. And at that stage, with all the um, uh, all the goings on in the uh, political world, finance world, the central banking, um, and yeah, I think from there, just conviction grew and grew and grew. Um, but yeah, it's just funny how many people I've spoken to or how many people you hear um, having those multiple touches of Bitcoin before they, they really dig into it. And I think that's going to continue um, in, into the future. Deadly. Yeah, so it was, a, it was a sort of like myself. It wasn't a single point. Well, I suppose for me, it was once I learned those 21 million Bitcoin. That was something that I got, you know, that was my sort of light bulb moment, I suppose, where I was like, okay, that's pretty damn scarce if everyone wants this thing. Um, but uh, but then, of course, my understanding and conviction just grows over, you know, a period of years and going through the market cycles. Um, would you be able to explain Bitcoin to me? I always get everyone to people to try and explain it because everyone explains it slightly different because they understand it slightly differently. But maybe in your words, like, well, what the hell is this thing? Yeah, yeah. And just just back in your previous point to you and the, the 21 million, like, again, that was my initial um, thought, but you always go through these questions, and it's the right thing to do. And I think every Bitcoiner will say the same. Like, it's 21 million. Why couldn't you create another one? You know, create another Bitcoin. And um, it's once you reach the stage of. Once you understand uh, that, it, that you yeah. can't, and that it is actually finite, for me, again, yeah, that was the light bulb of, okay, yeah. well, if there's definitely only 21 million, this thing's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And that's when you gain the real conviction, when you understand how Bitcoin was created, why it was created, and uh, why there will only ever be 21 million. And nothing will compete with it um, over time. Plus, its current network effect. That's where you, you gain the real conviction. Um, explain Bitcoin in my own words. Very difficult question. Uh, I mean, <laughs> That's the look. <laughs> the most difficult question because it probably depends on who who you're speaking to. Um, and it takes time, as you said, because we're going into so much things. You know, you're going into into macro. You're going into computer science. You're going into human incentives. You're going into you know so it like so it's you know that's why I'm like. You don't have to spend four hours, but give us a couple of minutes there for you to try and break it down for a, for a layman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that is complex. And there's a, a rabbit hole there that you know, I'm still going down. Every, everyone else is still going down. And yeah. never end. Um, uh, but again, my background is in technology and the automation space uh, at the moment, working with software um, automation. So I suppose the best description I would have uh, from my point of view, if I was explaining to someone, um, maybe a peer at work, um, it's a fully automated monetary system um it's a self-adjusting monetary system if, if you understand um the difficulty adjustments it's a self-auditing um monetary system if you understand how the nodes work um, and no one controls it and that's if you understand the decentralized nature so if you have a, a monetary system that self-auditing uh self-adjusting and no one controls it and it's based on scarcity that no one can change like that's something really powerful um, the other thing is, once you really understand it, you know, you, and you understand how Bitcoin functions today, uh, you can be nearly certain that you'll know how it functions in five years' time, and 10 years' time, uh, 20 years' time, um, to a certain degree. So you've kind of got that certainty around it. Um, when I look at um, other types of investments, like if you take real estate, for example, you don't know how many houses there's going to be in a certain area. Um, you don't know if three printing. Is going to scale up um, exponentially, which it likely is. And you can throw up houses and you know, lands of scarcity, but you can build up the ways uh, upwards and in, in housing. Um, companies, you're relying on decisions from CEOs and employees, and there's a lot of variables um, in that as well. Bond market, you look at what's happening uh, in the UK at the moment. Um, so when I look at certainty over a number of years uh, and understand Bitcoin and those. Uh, previous definitions that I gave you, 
Um, it gives me the certainty that this is a, a long-term play um, over many years that I'm going to understand what I've bought, sleep well at night, and yeah, happy at uh, happy at making a decision to invest in something like that. That's that's really cool. Yeah, that's a slightly different angle on what I've heard before. Um, tell me about um, the current market cycle that we're in. What do you think of the this bear market? You've been through a few before. How are you finding it? Is it anything different? Uh, yeah, macro is obviously um, different in this case, but the behavior um, around uh, Bitcoin and what it did the last bull market, the previous bull market, so I actually can try and focus that much on, on short term. Um, but you can see it's playing out very similar in, in ways um, in terms of, you know, the having kicks everything off, not directly, um, but many months later, um, it does take some time for some information to flow through and it's probably the same as how I got into Bitcoin. You kind of hear it once, you hear it twice, and the third time, you know, you do a bit more uh, looking into it. The having happens, there's a bit of a delay after that, and then people realize that, yeah, this is, this is, uh, the scarcity is going to make a difference. Um, so yeah, the, the bull market, um, yeah, obviously a huge, um, upswing, um, huge, followed by a huge downturn, um, afterwards, compounded probably what, what's happening, um, at the global, um, macroeconomic level. Um, but I, I don't see anything, um, majorly different and I'm actually um, happy enough with how it's played out um, so far. I do you think that what's happening at the moment, again, what's happening in the UK um, and other countries is a bit of an advertisement for, for Bitcoin and why it was created. It was born out of the last financial crisis and um, there could be another financial crisis. I'm not speculating that uh, at the moment. Um, but I think it shows you the way it was created and the power behind it um, and how flawed Central banking is and the control. <clears throat> so, um, it'll come up. You know, Bitcoin will come out of a, a price wise will come out of a, a bear market. Um, at some point, um, there could be a trigger point. There could be a catalyst for it. There might not. I don't tend to focus too much on that. Um, focus on the long term. You know, five, ten years out. Um, where is it going to be? It's a technology. Um, it's going to take time to adopt. As you say, you get a lot of different explanations from different people. So there's a lot of education to go on there. I'm just not worried at all um, about the bear market. Probably a good time to buy. Not financial advice, obviously. Um, but it, like looking back now, my regret from the last bear market at this time was obviously not having enough education to have that conviction to buy more at the time. So yeah, we, you can go into the nitty gritty about um, bear markets and what's causing it and what will happen in the next CPI update and the next uh, rate hikes um, across different various different companies and uh, governments. But to me, a lot of it's noise, focus on the long term. Um, news is always going to happen, good and bad. But when you understand Bitcoin to a certain degree and your convictions there, wait it out. It's going to play out in a certain manner. Yeah, in, in terms of just how it performed, <clears throat> excuse me, since 2020, like, although it's, you know, it's crashed, but in terms of all assets, like everything has crashed. If people had a look at their pensions, they, they wouldn't be as dismissive of Bitcoin because their pensions are so underwater right now. Um, but Bitcoin can recover in, in a week, what it might take their pension five years or a decade to recover in. Um, but, but in terms of all the major assets, like Bitcoin has been one of the, the highest performers. I just think maybe property has outperformed it um, since 2020. So in terms of general investing of everything we, we can put our money into, it hasn't done all that bad. And then in terms of, you know, you and me both, we read all the famous investors books and all their timeless principles, but but something that, that, that rhymes in most of these books of any super successful investor is that they're more excited in, in the bear markets than they are in, in the bull markets because the bear market is where you create all the wealth and that's what i've been trying to communicate on my channel and my business that you know this is this is where we make the magic happen i know it's it looks all doom and gloom and you're seeing all doom and gloom but literally this is the opportunity this is how you create your future financial freedom it's those who can make the correct decisions when when um when when, uh, when everyone else is running you're you're running into the burning building i suppose and everyone else is running out of it or, um, you know, uh, Warren Buffett, I suppose, when, when there's blood on the streets is when you're buying, even if it's your own, like, and these are just, again, sort of timeless 
principles of investing that I just bring them into this digital asset space and I think you have to abide by them uh, and respect those timeless principles just as much as as you would traditionally but because these digital digital asset like bitcoin moves so much faster well you're you're not having to wait a decade to see if you're right you can literally find out if you're right in maybe worst case two years from now you know so the plays are much shorter and the rewards are much bigger yeah yeah and as i say price uh, draws people on i think that long-term view again if you like long-term looking forward but if you look long-term back you'll see that those trends happen and 100 right um bear markets you know market downturns are the best time to invest um best time to create new uh, bitcoin content as well uh Danae, and uh, build your own business so uh great work obviously you're, you're doing here and education is going to be key uh during this this period as well um you always hear about people as well having uh ignoring you in the bear market and then once the bull market starts they come and start asking you questions again but at least if you've done your part um i've done my part during this time um at least you'll be there for them to to answer answer questions they, 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 they'll know who to be ringing <laughs> <laughs> when they're trying to pile in to get 100 with then have 100 grand looking for a bitcoin <laughs> um that's deadly uh, one little question maybe just get your take on this um the proof of work and proof of stake proof of stake has all the political weight behind it and proof of work has all the headwinds of vsg do you see that being a strong headwind or how do you see that playing out like obviously we both understand the difference that that proof of work is is, is necessary for sound money um but but do you, it's obviously going to be a definite attack on bitcoin do you see it as a legitimate threat on it uh short term possibly uh, sure, yeah. and again long term i only see it playing out one way again big fan of history and um, looking back at um what's happened in previous uh the, I know people have been over this as well, previous empires and how they built up um, their empire through um, uh, acquiring lots of power, um, lots of goods, getting carried away with it, make decisions, try and stay in power, and they end up um, devaluing uh, their own worth, um, whether it's gold, another currency. Um, and you can see it happening in uh, the fiat world at the moment. Um, in terms of um, proof of stake versus proof of work, um, it's an all rabbit hole to go down. Um, I feel that um, proof of stake is a replication of the current fiat system. And, and once you start understanding that, you'll know how it'll end. Um, proof of work is more uh, in relation to what gold um, was like. Gold's a monetary system has been around 5,000 years. Fiat systems, a monetary system has been around, you know, 51, 52 years. Um, it's still an experiment, uh, really. Um, a failed and, experiment, I, I would call it. <laughs> yeah, 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 very, very much experimental. So if you understand that both of them are based on different uh, monetary fundamentals um, and one's got a proven track record over um, history, you you know how this this will play out. Um, like we're in a we're in a situation where wealth inequality is growing over time, and you can see it even more since 1971, um, when properly moved off the the gold standard, um, and that's only going to continue. And if you if your investment is in uh, proof of stake, um, uh, token or coin, whatever way you want to refer to it, uh, unless you're one of the founders you're probably not going to benefit off it over time. And then in terms of proof of work, um, ESG narrative, I think that's going to be a problem until, I, I don't know when it's going to be resolved, but I think people will start understanding, again, it's all about education, understand it more and more and realize that for me, uh, Bitcoin proof of work will be a huge driver for renewable energy um, in the future. So the way, the way you have to think about it is um, in, in any business that you have, if you have the like, cost is a huge thing, obviously you want to make profit, so you want to make revenue, but cost is a huge thing. And if you own, for example, a coffee business, you want to make sure that you get um, coffee beans from the most efficient uh, source, low cost, um, best option, because that's going to improve your overall profit margins. Whether it's, um, you know, like timber as uh, your uh, your input, you know, your, your cost, 
you want to make sure that you're sourcing that from the right place. Bitcoin's the only uh, commodity that I can see that you, you need to put in um, only electricity to get something out of it. So if you're on the mining uh, operation and your cost, um, I know there's hardware cost there as well, um, but your main cost is going to be electricity. You're going to do your best to innovate around that and bring the lowest cost um, electricity to your business. Your incentive the best, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's incentivize you to, um, to look for, for low cost um, electricity. Um, and energy. Um, so, yeah, you'll see this. Um, I can only see the trajectory of that uh, increasing um, over over years. Again, in the short term, you might read a new story that somebody's opened a coal factory to uh, mine Bitcoin, but in the long term, it's only going to gonna drive towards cheaper uh, renewable um, energy or stranded energy. Um, Isn't that one of the most beautiful things, I think, about Bitcoin, that it's just, that's what, that's what it does. It just pulls human incentives that we all operate out of self-interest and it just uses human incentives to create this crazy technology like that's so innovative, but it just works on, I think, human incentives. Yeah, the incentives on it, like Satoshi's um, years, centuries ahead of, of everyone else and uh, how, how this was uh, brought about. I know there's you know, 30, 40 uh, years of uh, research behind it as well in terms of other attempts. But yeah, the, the foresight um, Satoshi had was, yeah, it's unbelievable when you start digging into the uh, depths of it. But yeah, I think the narrative over EST is going to eventually flip in its head and people start realizing that this is going to bring a lot of innovation um, around renewable energy. It's just a phase that you have to go through. Um, like I'm sure once cars were uh, first came along um, and they were on the road. People were questioning um, a lot, you know, around that. There wasn't the right infrastructure there. You know, it was kind of scary, you know, at the beginning, these huge chunks of metal. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they lobbied, right, that when cars first came out, the horse and cart people obviously went to the politicians and said, these things are dangerous. A fella had to walk in front of it with a flag waving it. <laughs> but, like, as I, as I, I was only chatting because I was talking to a good few no-conners. I was at the Biz Expo yesterday. And, um, you know, they were coming up with it. Well, Bitcoin's crashed and everything. And I'd be chatting away to them. I'd be like, see this? Like, Bitcoin is the wheel, okay? That's what it's like. doesn't matter if... And everyone's going around carrying stuff and they don't. the wheel is not invented. Like, it doesn't matter who says you can't use the wheel. That thing eventually is going to take off, you know, as a technology. You can't suppress it. And sometimes the wheel will be worth 20 grand and then it might be worth 60 grand. But really, what is the value of the wheel to humanity? It's much more than 60 grand, I think. It's much more than 20 grand. You know, it's pretty much infinite value is going from not having the wheel in humanity to having the wheel. And likewise, I think not having Bitcoin for humans to use as a digital store of value. And we're always using these shitty ass physical stores of value, which suffer from all the constraints of the physical world, Newtonian physics. And now we've digitized it, or as Sailor says, digital energy like that. That still just blows my mind, digital energy. Um, it's a technology component of it, really, that's, that's going to drive it forward, in my view, anyway. Um, like, obviously, education is a big thing, and I've said it a few times already, and uh, keep repeating that. Um, but the technology component of it, um, it, it always takes time, especially if it's new. Um, people don't get it at the beginning, and then the infrastructure has to be built around it, too. You know, again, same like cars, um, same like the internet, um, various, other, um, various other versions of this where... Um, or examples of this where you know, it starts off as something it's in a it's in its most basic form you integrate it into society over time and it grows exponentially from there um let's say car internet um telephone systems there's no there's not always the end user um at that stage like there wasn't always a you know a, a, sta a fuel station to uh, fuel your car. Same as electric cars now, I suppose. Like the infrastructure isn't there, but you know that it's going to be a huge um, part of society going forward. And people won't buy electric cars because of what is it, range anxiety that people get. Like they, they won't drive far enough. And uh, battery technology is going to be better. Um, the infrastructure is going to be there. There's going to be um, more uh, charging points over time. It's just a matter of time. Not, nothing gets built very quickly um, in that way. So. 
Uh, to me, technology is a big part of it. It's only going to be a matter of time before the infrastructure keeps growing and people realize why they need it through education and then it'll be built into applications, uh, your mobile phone, your day-to-day -day life um, eventually. Yeah, humans only move towards technology. There's never been a point in history where we've done the opposite like that sort of, and that's since before the wheel was invented. That's just our journey. Uh, yeah. So we're, we're, we're destined to become machines. <laughs> yeah, when you put it like that, that's maybe not so, <laughs> but then, then again, if you want the, the questions around, you know, are, are we already um, augmented with technology with the amount of time you spend on your phone? Um, mm. <clears throat> It's only going to extend from that um, going forward as well, and it might not. It might be a necessary, uh, necessarily a bad thing. You know, the technology has improved humanity um, hugely. Yeah, definitely. Well, if I can get some robot arms and legs, because my joints are fairly worn out and sore all the time. <laughs> um, we'll talk a little bit about uh, your book. So you wrote the book on uh, of why Bitcoin. Can you tell us about it a little bit, please? Yeah. Um, so yeah, last year, um, just like when when you go down that rabbit hole, you've got a lot of uh, thoughts in your head, and it's it's kind of you know it, it grips you um, over time. And there's times where you know you're spending quite a lot of your day thinking about it, and I just need to get a lot of my thoughts out um, on paper. I think there's two. That, that's one reason uh, for writing. The second is again what, what I've been talking about: education. Um, it, it's like, Education won't stop for Bitcoin for generations. You know, I, I still think people get the fundamentals. I think I'll, I'll still be learning. I still learn, you know, um, constantly um, in Bitcoin, even after being on it for years. Um, so yeah, the education piece was was a big part of it. Um, uh, to get my thoughts out on paper. Um, I don't actually sell the book for. Uh, I think it's break even more or less. And the reason for that is to try and increase um, adoption um, for people. I really do think that it's going to change the world for the better. So when you have that kind of motivation, it's it, it's easy uh, to write a book um, on it. Uh, the other thing was the angle that I tried to come at um, on the book was um, more of a, a layman's uh, description of it. Probably, obviously, there's technical components to it. But everyone out there who's educating on Bitcoin at the minute, and if you listen to Michael Sayer, um, great, great guy at um, explaining things, but I think he's talking to a certain audience, and sometimes he's talking to the big institutions, and mm. you know, you're referencing, you know, uh, when Google, you know, eventually catches on, and they dump 10 billion on this, you know, it's going to change things, and um, it, it actually started off, which I really admired about uh, Michael Sayer was going around the, the podcasts uh, and the YouTube channels of some of the smaller uh, Bitcoin accounts, and and spending hours with him talking through this, which was admirable. Um, but again, I think he still talks in a certain way uh, that, you know, like normal guy in the street sometimes just won't understand when he's talking about basis points. And, you know, it, it's like I, I've learned a lot from him as well still. Um, and he, he's educated me a good bit, but it's not going to appeal to everyone. And then you've got um, other Bitcoin educators, uh, like Greg Foss, uh, a, lot of, a lot of time uh, for Greg as well, and watched a lot of, spent a lot of time watching his. Um, and again, he's talking, you know, about the bond markets, and he's talking in a certain way. Um, and I think yeah, he's yeah. gonna—he he loses me when he goes into, you know, bond market business. That's like, yeah. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I don't get it, but Greg's yeah. entertaining. <laughs> that was off of him. It's only math. Um, I don't know what yeah. grade he pushes it at, but um, I think he, <laughs> he thinks everyone from fifth grade is a, a math genius. But yeah, look. Um, People get um, what he's saying, and people won't. Um, Robert Breedlove as well, uh, great content uh, creator as well, and great for the, the space. Um, again, he has a, his own style, but again, I think it's most of these guys came from a finance background and they're talking in finance, or you know, obviously CEOs of companies. And uh, I'm not saying who one is, but uh, talking to everyday person, but I felt there was still a gap there uh, to address. So. Uh, I wrote the book and it's laid into um, four sections um, and, and it does start off with, in my opinion, what, what you need to understand first of all is, I don't know, I'm not plagiarizing from Robert Breedlove, but you have to understand money first of all, like, like what is money, how, how do we get to how do we get to where we are today um, and going through that whole journey of you know gold and the 
empires that um, collected gold, how they devalued the uh, gold and uh, fell you know, from power, thought they were invincible um, at stages. And um, then through the whole Bretton Woods and uh, gold standard and moving to fiat and where we are today. And once you go through that journey, you know, at the beginning, you understand it better. Um, uh, I'm probably influenced a bit by um, what's in the Bitcoin standard. Again, Bitcoin standard, I think even the audio books like nine, 10 hours. Um, it, it's a long read. It, it's brilliant. Like it's very good, um, really well explained. Um, I tried to do some of that work in a concise manner. Um, like the book that I have is only 100 odd pages. It's not a, it's not a huge book. Um, and it's there for people to pick up. You could probably read it in two hours, um, you know, an hour, maybe two hours. Um, you could read it and you could learn quite a lot. So it takes you through um, what is money, then why was Bitcoin created, uh, the technology components of Bitcoin, because that's what makes it, to me, the genius uh, invention and discovery that it is, and um, how all the parts fix, uh, fit together. Then the, the adoption of Bitcoin then over time, you know, how it's evolved and how I see it evolving um, over the next you know, five to 10 years or so um, and, and beyond. I do plan on writing a further book, probably more theoretical on the future of, of Bitcoin and, and um, where where I see it in the, the very, very long term. But I think this book is kind of a kickoff for people to understand the fundamentals of Bitcoin, again, understand the way behind it. And then, yeah, it, it, there should be enough in that for anyone who's starting to, uh, <laughs> to ask more questions and do more research afterwards. I did leave a lot of it open as well to provoke people to, to think and ask more questions. And, you know, there are some open-ended questions in it. So, you know, like, what do you think happens if if we continue to do this in the fiat world? Um, and everybody who's been in this space long enough knows that reading a two-hour book isn't long enough, but it's isn't enough, but it's, it's enough to get you started. Mm. Yeah. My hope would be that people will go on and pick up other books, pick up other YouTube videos, you know, listen to the likes of your channel and other channels and start educating themselves then uh, from there. So, yeah, that was a, that was like the um, two or three main reasons um, that I wrote it to get my thoughts out on the page um, and to uh, start educating a, an audience that probably isn't um, covered um, by the big mass media um, influencers that are out there at the moment. That's deadly, yeah. I'm really looking forward to reading it and uh, maybe we can get you on again and we can go through the book and I can quiz it. <laughs> we'll go through some of those questions. Um, just um, as we're starting to, to, to finish up, I just wanted to ask you a little bit, because in the beginning of your story, you were, you know, you were into some stocks and mainly index funds and, and, and property. Um, are you still diversified into those asset classes and it's sort of just two questions of one and within the crypt crypto ecosystem are you diversified or are you only interested and in focused on bitcoin i don't know you went there you went there <laughs> well, first of all i haven't sold my house um so i, I, I am diversified um yeah i still own some stuff um as well um don't think it would ever be 100 percent a coin even though my conviction's extremely high but that's only because you can't predict what's around the corner um like uh, yeah my conviction on bitcoin's pretty high it's a huge chunk of uh my portfolio um so and i'll probably continue um in that way um still going forward um yeah i don't plan on and, and being extreme leverage in any way um trying to be smart about it and um yeah wouldn't advise anyone to um, go 100% in Bitcoin, although I know there's plenty of people out there and if it works out how it would, they'll be uh, sitting in their citadels uh, for, for uh, many, many years. Um, but yeah, and, and my conviction is probably as um, strong as theirs, um, even if, I suppose, you know, put your money where your mouth is, uh, but I still do have a background in uh, a lot of education and finance and um, the history of investing that tells me enough to not uh, go 100% in, in anything um, ever. But yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm blown away by the conviction of uh, 
some Bitcoiners. Um, yeah. So and, and look, I do believe that it is going to work out um, the way it should, just a matter of time. In terms of the crypto question, um, yeah, I uh, in, in 2017, um, as these as I started investing in Dublin and Bitcoin, I did buy some altcoins as well. Um, I yeah, rolled them up. Um, they crashed as well. Lost money on them. Um, the more I educate myself around Bitcoin, and you do have to understand, I think some altcoins, and I wouldn't say to anyone, look at Bitcoin only and don't look at altcoins, because the more you look at those, the more your the more your conviction in Bitcoin raises, because you see the flaws, and you've already seen that even in the the last um, cycle uh, with some of the altcoins crashing to zero, um, sometimes because of human intervention or trying to over-engineer uh, things like Bitcoin's basic, and that's the beauty of it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I didn't lose money that I would cry over at all in all points, but I could see, and I'm probably lucky um, that I didn't get into it and, at, at, a, at the top and um, threw all my money in there. Um, I watched it more observed, same way as I did with investing. I observed it for a while, um, watched it, didn't get too carried away. And yeah, the, once I educated myself to a certain level in Bitcoin, I understand it. These again, same same thesis. Five ten years out, I know where Bitcoin's going to be. I don't know how these other altcoins are going to be set up. I don't know. Are they going to change code? Are they going to break something? Um, is it going to favor you know certain people um, that uh, run these protocols? You know, I, I I don't think there's enough eyes on certain protocols well to understand. Um, the long term, like Bitcoin's been scrutinized over and over again, it gives you a level of trust to be reviewing it um, over time. If something comes out next week, like uh, it probably just comes from my nature of what I said at the beginning. I observed investing for a while before I actually put my money in it. And, what, and I'm glad I did it with altcoins instead of just jumping in at it. So, yeah, I, I, I diversify still, um, but in terms of uh, digital assets, it's Bitcoin only for me. Deadly man. That's awesome. Is there anything else that we haven't mentioned that you would like to mention today? No, no, just again on the, on the long term view. Um, I think we're going to keep experiencing this again. Like, if you're a long term thinker, you should be looking long term back as well. And you, you see the trends over time. Um, we're going to keep experiencing this boom and bust um, at the moment. I have friends talking about who never talked about finance or economics before starting to talk about inflation rates and uh, interest rates so it, it's become more topical um people see it as just something natural naturally that happens within the finance world um but you can see that it's becoming it's going to become more extreme um since the introduction of uh fake currencies i think the wealth gap gap is widening over time um and i think there's going to be more uncertainty um and 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 finance the financial world and people like every day everyday man and woman um, who are trying to save for the future there's a lot of uncertainty there um, so until until we until money is not a centrally controlled um, asset until it's completely decentralized um, and, and I'm not a libertarian by, by, any, by any means like, I think obviously government is needed in certain ways I just don't think that uh, money should be one of those things that somebody should control it's it's the ultimate player when you think about it because again it comes back to incentives. It, it, it's not it's not a yeah it's not a power that any uh, entity should have. Um, it should be completely decentralized. And once you understand that again, uh, you understand the the way that the world needs to move forward um, over time in order to give the world more set, uh, certainty, less boom and bust, um, and just yeah, you'd be generally more content understanding like. You, I can see the next happen already. I can see the one after. I can see the one after. Mm -hmm. Don't know what will happen in between those, but I, I, the, the certainty that Bitcoin gives you is uh, what I base everything on. Well, one of, one of the things that, I, that I've noticed from, from working with our guys in the Retire Early Club is that it's like Bitcoin. It's like whenever you're trying to get something, people focus on, like my whole mantra and all my companies was always, and my life was progress, not perfection. That was our, I remember when I got this lesson. I broke my back, had a strap on, a big float around me, and I was walking the hydrotherapy pill. And it was only a small pill, about three meters long. 
And I remember I'd done four lengths of it and they took me out and I was in agony. And a month later, I was doing 30 lengths. I remember being home after and I was still in agony. I was going, this isn't work and this back's never going to get better. And then I started thinking about it. I was like, hold on a minute. You're after doing 30 lengths and you're in pain. 30 days ago, you were doing four lengths and you were in the same pain. Look at the work. How much percentage increase is that? And that's when I started, my mind shifted. It was all about making progress. So rather than getting to your goal, you know, the, the dream of finances, I want to be retired. I want to have all this money in the bank and all this other material crap that you think is going to make you happy, but then when you get it, you realize it doesn't. What Bitcoin tends to do is, and what I've found the guys in Retire Early Club is, once they understand this technology and they understand, as you say, the predictability of it, it gives them hope. So rather than being like, fiat is hopeless. You know, if you're young today and you're looking at assets and you're trying to get on the property ladder, you're like, the fuck do I do with my wages every week? Put them in the bank? Like, we can see where that's going. They're just going down the toilet. Uh, but once people start to get and understand Bitcoin, like, oh yeah, I don't have to go all in on this thing, but I can start building some wealth in this predictable financial system. And because I've done a lot of work on it, my conviction has grown. And, you know, sort of where I'm at, I'm like, this is the fucking wheel. Everyone is going to use this thing. And 99% of the world doesn't get it yet. Like, how lucky am I to stumble across this thing? And, and there's some idiots going around saying, 20 grand's a lot for a Bitcoin. You know what I mean? They're, they're focusing on the price of something, not the value. And <laughs> I done a talk, I done a talk at Biz Expo yesterday. Yeah. And, and, and I pulled out a poo, right? And I says, I swear to God, pull it out in front of a room full of business owners. And they're like, what the fuck's this letter? Had it in my hand. It's a fake one, obviously. And it says, uh, I'll sell you this for, right, a penny, for a penny. Okay. So it's really cheap, but it's valuable. Okay. And I left that. I threw it on the ground. I says, think of that offer. Then I pulled out a 50 quid note and I held it in my hand. It says, I'll sell you this for a tenner. It's a thousand times more expensive than the poo. Okay. But is it more valuable? Yes, because it's five times more valuable than what I'm selling it for you. You know, so the, the, and that's one of the things when people are on about the price of Bitcoin, it's like, that's the least interesting thing at the moment. It's the technology that we should be getting our head around um, and trying to figure out. And again, one of my friends who's a venture capitalist and is investing heavily into this space, this is like price, who gives a fuck about price? Who cares about price? Like it's, uh, it's uh, the technology. This is, this is, this is what we, we need to understand. And, and and then you realize but yeah i suppose to sum it all up bitcoin's hope gives you hope for the future it gives you optimism for the future and all you have is your present moment you know rather than deferring your happiness to well if i get rich i'll be happy then it's like fuck no i feel great i understand bitcoin uh, i'm saving in the money that goes up in value i can get out my life and i feel good about it today i'm happy progress not perfection that's always been my mindset anyway yeah. no that's a good look, look as well uh Danny. yeah um what I want to ask you before we finish up, so your very last question, <laughs> Chris, please, just for a bit of crack, not financial advice, neither of us, well, I'm not a financial advisor, you're not a financial advisor, but uh, what do you think the price of Bitcoin is going to be in 2030? You can have a bullish and a bearish answer, um, just for a bit of crack. I know it's about a crack, but I, I really don't, uh, yeah, I, I don't answer um, price predictions short term or long term. Um, uh, I know it's going to be a lot more valuable than a lot of other assets. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what, a lot of variables, and I, I don't, I know that's for a bit of crack, and you, you, you don't want a serious answer, but it, it's just too hard to um, even put a number on it. Um, and and one of the things you've learned that I've learned over the bull market was like most people who gave a price prediction uh, ended up being a fool. Um, there's very few, like, like Selena Alden and Michael Saylor, who actually stayed away from, from price predictions. And some of the people who I respected as well gave short-term price predictions and, yeah, ended up looking foolish. But, yeah, look, based on adoption dates um, and trajectory, you know, you wouldn't really see a million-dollar Bitcoin um, by 2030. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but, you know, looking at, like, everyone shows the internet mobile phone adoption, um, over time, you can't help but see the correlation uh, to that. Um, and then as adoption go, grows, uh, prices obviously going to grow. Um, and then factor in the having factor in everything else, like a million dollar Bitcoin is not um, out of out of uh, the realms of possibility. Mm, Twenty thirty is a long way away. It's a lot of education. It's a lot of understanding it's a lot of adoption it's a lot of companies building on it it's a lot of applications and stuff we don't even know yet so and it's all 
Yeah. And, and there's a lot of news out there as well that doesn't make the headlines of uh, these uh, adoption, you know, adoption happening, new businesses, uh, growing up new um, companies adopting it in, in certain ways, new applications coming out, different layers on, on Bitcoin as well. And, and there's a lot of uh, good engineering going on at, at the second layer, and third layer of, of Bitcoin that you can spend all day talking as well about and and no one sees that and that's the whole you know, building over time um it'll increase adoption and i can only see it going in one direction uh, from here deadly where can we find your book why bitcoin uh it's on it's on amazon uh at the minute um I can't even remember the, the, the price of it again. It's it's very I think it's low cost um compared to um all our books and the reason that that is it, it's all about to me it's all about um education and my drive for education comes from that I feel that Bitcoin is gonna bring a better world um overall. Um so yeah, it's on it's on Amazon. Um if you search for it, white Bitcoin um you should be able to find it. I haven't sold that many. I haven't done any self promotion. This is probably the first time I've talked about it uh, in, in public, apart um, outside of my friends and family. So um, it sold some you know, hundred odd copies. It's not going to be a, a bestseller across the world. Well, maybe, maybe not now, maybe in a few years' time, in the next bull run, it will catch on. But uh, look, it's, it's there for people to buy. It's in uh, hard copy, um, which I actually have a copy of it there for anybody that wants to. Uh, look it up and find the cover you'll see it by the cover um and it's also an um ebook version i have got a recording of it as well um for an audio book which i just haven't put into production yet i just need to get time to um you know filter out some of the um the, the quality content and, and i'll release that as well so yeah happy with it proud of it um just haven't done a lot of uh, selling on it um, or promotion on the, on the book um, but I, I will get around to it uh, at some stage for now it's, it's an education piece people hopefully pick it up um, for, for low cost and, and read it and take a journey from there um, and, and, and progress Fair play man doing your part I'm looking uh, I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it well I'll say thanks for today thanks for coming on and uh, it's been great to chat to you and get to know you and hopefully we'll, we'll probably try and get you back on again in the future thanks Chris yeah, love to do it again. Thanks. Cheers tonight.